So yesterday when reading the interlinear Bible, I noticed that Moses made the brazen serpent um, after God told him to make a fiery. He didn't actually say fiery serpent. He just said seraph. So um, I, went, I went and started digging. I looked in the kill, the leash, um, Edersheim. Then I found this entry right here in this, um, this dictionary of the Bible by James Hastings. So dictionary of the Bible by James Hastings. He actually says, um, real short and sweet, he says, the seraphim are mentioned in only one passage in scripture, Isaiah 6, 2. In Isaiah's inaugural vision, these constitute the celestial adorants who sing the trisagion in antiphonal chorus. They are described as having six wings, one pair for veiling their eyes, another for covering their body, euphemistically called feet, and one for flying. These creatures had human hands and voices, verses 6. But whether they had human bodies is not known. Their function was Yahweh's service, both in adoration and protecting him from the approach of the profane and unholy. Though not mentioned as such in New Testament, the four living creatures of Revelation 4.8 are an obvious reflection of this passage and of Ezekiel 10. Later Jewish tradition suggests that the seraphim were serpentine. And it gives you the um, apocryphal books here. This accords with the use of the singular seraph, Numbers 21.8, Deuteronomy 8.15, Isaiah 14.29, and Isaiah 30, verse 6. The fiery serpent, also found in the plural, and thus identical with our word at Numbers 21.6. The word is derived from a root meaning to burn, an interesting relief on stone from Tel Halaf shows a goddess with six wings holding a serpent in each hand. Whether this has anything to do with the Hebrew seraphim is, of course, undemonstrable. Interesting. All right, so I hope you know a little bit more now about a seraph and the seraphim. All right, take it easy, y'all.